Are there any additional amendments to the bill to his title? Madam Speaker. The gentleman has an amendment. The gentleman has an amendment. Madam Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. It's amendment number 583026-1. Amendment number one. Move so much be considered the reading of the amendment, Madam Speaker. So ordered. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Before I read this amendment, I just have a couple of questions for the floor leader, if I may. Sure, and then I look forward to reading the amendment. Thanks. And I just want you to know, floor leader, I would have provided this amendment to you in advance, but it just came in my email inbox. Um, so the bill is House Bill 862, election law ballot canvassing, multiple ballots cast by an individual. And I'm looking at the last page, page two of two, at the bottom, where the new language says, it's a local board, if a local board receives more than one ballot in separate envelopes from the same individual. Can you explain to me how that happens? How someone submits more than one ballot? Well, you have a bill in front of us that says if a local board receives more than one ballot in separate envelopes from the same individual. So I'm just confused. How does an individual get two ballots? So an individual can request an absentee ballot. And if that ballot is damaged or lost, they can request another one. And so there, as I mentioned before, there are lots of reasons why someone may end up submitting a second ballot. How does the individual get two ballots? They request each ballot. And so how can they request two ballots? What is it about the Ways and Means Committee that's allowing individuals to have two ballots to begin with? So if a voter requests a ballot and doesn't receive it, they might get nervous. They might think it's lost in the mail. They might reach out to the Board of Elections and say, I never received my ballot. I need another one. I need you to send another. That's one way it could happen. And so it could happen, as you say, because they lost the first one, requested a second one, but this language says... If a local board receives more than one ballot in separate envelopes from the same individual. So it, it, just, it just confuses me. The individual didn't lose the first ballot because they casted two ballots because the same individual cast two ballots in two separate envelopes according to your bill. So individuals can lose things and then find them. They can think they lost and them and, a, then and then find then cast out. a second ballot. Point of order, Madam Speaker. The gentleman's asking questions and not allowing the floor leader to respond to them. Happy to allow her to respond. Thank you. Floor leader. So an individual could lose a ballot, request a second ballot, find the ballot, and be confused, right? We, we don't know how someone may end up submitting two ballots. It could be that, as I mentioned before, you know, a, a member of the household trying to be helpful, sees a ballot ready to be mailed, puts it in the mail, doesn't mention it. The voter can't find the ballot they meant to put in the mail, panics, requests a replacement, and sends it in. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Madam Speaker, this amendment corrects that problem. Pretty amazing. We have a bill in front of us that says that a person can actually have two live ballots. How did they get two live ballots? Well, they got two live ballots because the Democrat Party has enabled a system to give them two live ballots. That's what this bill does. It does it. On the amendment, please. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about election law on the amendment. This is an important issue for the citizens of the state. No one should have two live ballots. And yet, that's what this bill does. So the amendment basically says that should a person submit two live ballots, however they got them, who knows, and those live ballots came in separate envelopes from the same individual, 
then that would immediately trigger an investigation of fraud. And further, the amendment says, because there are so many live ballots that are being sent to people, apparently including duplicate live ballots, that the amendment prohibits and makes it a felony to do what? To ballot harvest. To ballot harvest. Because let's face it, if you're giving people live ballots and they're submitting two live ballots from the same individual, then ballot harvesting should be made illegal. And Madam so, Madam Speaker, for all those reasons, I move this common sense amendment. Thank you. Floor leader. Madam Speaker, thank you. Um, colleagues, I'd urge you to resist this amendment. Um, you know, I discussed a variety of situations where someone may end up submitting more than one absentee ballot, getting a little confused, getting forgetful. This is a problem often for individuals who are older or perhaps have disabilities and, and voting by mail is the, the easiest way they can vote. Now, if someone under this amendment submits a second absentee ballot because they were forgetful that they had mailed the first, thought they had lost it, we're now gonna subject them to a criminal investigation? When, when someone's trying to vote more than once, they don't do it under the same name. This is, this is ridiculous. I, I think, you know, <laughs> just, it's, it's creating a felony out of an honest mistake. That's not the direction this body should be going. I, again, I urge you to resist the amendment. Madam Speaker. Oh, the, Coral Matern. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a question for the maker of the amendment. Absolutely. Thank you so much for entertaining a question. Um, I heard you make comments several times about the committee and about the Democratic Party. And I was wondering if on the amendment, given those comments, you'd be able to share with the body um, the makeup of the State Board of Elections that runs our elections and also the County Board of Elections. I'm not sure I understand your question. Your question is what? Sorry? My question is, if you'd be able to share with the body the makeup of the State Board of Elections and the County Board of Elections currently by law. Sure. So here's the thing. We're discussing House Bill 862, and we're discussing, we're discussing my amendment, which is ballot harvesting. So if we're discussing ballot harvesting, which clearly is legal in Maryland, and this amendment is trying to make it illegal to ballot harvest, it doesn't matter what the makeup is because the Democrat Party, the majority party, is making the law. So who cares what, um, the, who cares what the makeup is? You're making the law. Delegate. You're passing laws like this. Delegate, are you willing to answer my question on your amendment, the comment for your explanation not about your amendment? amendment. It's it not on, on the amendment. It is on the amendment. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Well, Madam Speaker. Commentary. I just wish to share with the body, given the out of order comments by the member about the Ways and Means Committee and also about the Democratic Party, that our Board of Elections at the state level and our county level by law are made up by the governor's party and that the job of the Ways and Means Committee, the House of Delegates, is to ensure um, fair and free elections, and that's what we are working towards. So I wanna ask the member to please refrain from impugning members of this body who are working their hardest on expanding voting rights, and to please refrain from impugning the Democratic Party as well. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I certainly appreciate those comments. Unfortunately, we're debating a bill, and when we're debating a bill, we're talking about the policy, and this is the policy of the Democrat Party. That is a classic free speech issue. Gentlemen, are you going to okay. finish your comments on the amendments? That's so exactly what I'm voted, talking about. Madam this Speaker. amendment voted on. This is important, okay? We hear this time and again where the parliamentarian gets up and says, you can't talk about the amendment or talk about why the amendment is there or the policies of one party or You're the on, other. You have the floor. So Thank why you. don't you talk about what you want to talk Absolutely. about so we can get voting on this amendment. So. I agree with you. So this particular amendment says, among other things, that if an individual sends in more than one ballot in separate envelopes, 
<laughs> and however they got those ballots, who knows, that that individual and the Board of Elections would have to initiate a fraud investigation. I'm sure there is a reasonable excuse in some cases. And then the amendment also says that we can no longer ballot harvest. And ballot harvesting is made possible by this bill because it says and admits and acknowledges that people have two live ballots. It's remarkable. That's a remarkable thing. That is a policy of the Democrat Party. It's not a policy of the Republican Party. And it has to be said, and I'm going to say it again and again because of the free speech issue and we're debating this. Not impugning a motive. It's a fact. For all those reasons, Madam Speaker, I move this amendment. Thank you. Madam Speaker. The majority leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I know it's not just me. I, kn I know it's not just Democrats. I talk to people in the minority party, too, who are also annoyed by these incessant attempts to inject D.C.-style partisanship onto this floor. I know it's not just me. And yeah, the gentleman has the right to, to say what he wishes on the floor. It doesn't make it the right thing to do. It doesn't make it a good argument. But frankly, it's, I think, beneath most of us in this chamber to engage in those types of attacks and try to turn this place into a 24-hour news channel where people scream at each other all the time and hurl accusations and insults. We are better than that, most of us. On this amendment, I, this amendment's pretty straightforward, right? If you want to make it harder for people with disabilities and people with Alzheimer's to cast a ballot, if you want to say that somebody with Alzheimer's who forgot that they ordered their first ballot and orders another by accident should go to jail for three years. If that's what you think, vote for this amendment. If you think people are human and maybe we shouldn't be throwing people in jail for three years for having Alzheimer's and making a mistake, then vote against this amendment. It's not about party. It's about the basic rights of voters. Madam Speaker. I'd ask the body to reject the amendment. Madam Speaker. Is the, is the minority or the majority leader really on the bill there? I haven't called on you yet. The gentleman from St. Mary's, you were talking Thank you. Time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I don't know if the majority leader was actually on the amendment there. I mean, if you want to talk about D.C. type politics and impugning people's motive, we're going to throw people in jail with this amendment. Does the gentleman have a point he wants to make? Yeah, I'm talking about the amendment. The amendment doesn't send anybody into jail. It's a fraud investigation. <laughs> Only if you ballot harvest, which is against the law. And you've told us that numerous times on the floor. Look, there's a problem that we have in this state. A quick Google search would tell you that over 35,000 ballots were rejected last primary in the state of Maryland. And you, if you don't want to fix the problem, don't criticize the minority party for trying to address the amendment. We put amendments in good faith on the floor and we're told, well, you need to submit a bill. You should have thought of that three months ago. And then when we sit up there to debate it, well, that's just D.C. politics. Why? Because we don't agree with you? That's not, that's not right. Madam Speaker, I support this amendment. I think we need to fix the problem. On the Thank amendment, you. Madam Speaker. all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Roll call. Roll call. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to explain my vote. Madam Speaker. Two minutes. Gentleman from Anne Arundel. Thank you. I won't take two minutes. I, I think just go back to what this amendment is about. And I think to the general lady that when she mentioned that there hasn't been a single case that's been prosecuted, it's specifically because of that, because we're not investigating those cases. And I think this is a reasonable amendment that kind of got off track. This bill or this amendment is reasonable. And it just adds a safeguard to catch those people that are intentionally, illegally 
double voting. This isn't about people with Alzheimer's. This is not about sending people to jail that they accidentally voted twice. I think if it's investigated and if it's found that they actually have Alzheimer's or they have a re legitimate reason for voting twice, then the investigation ends. We do this all the time, and um, for that reason, I am voting green on this amendment. General, because I believe General Lady from Baltimore County, two minutes. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. To explain my vote, there's been a disturbing trend on the floor of the House of trying to silence the minority party, especially on issues around election law. You can continue to try to silence us all you want. We will not stop. But you will hear very loudly from the voters in just a few months. Madam Speaker. Minority Leader. I'll explain my vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Explain Here's all vote. that I would say. We are Democrats. We are Republicans. There's nothing wrong with, with saying that. I'm proud to be a Republican. I'm also proud to be a member of this chamber. I believe that this amendment, I, I voted against this bill, although I worked very hard with my friend from Howard County, the maker of the bill, and my friend from Montgomery County, the chair of the subcommittee, to do the best that we could to come up with a product. We couldn't get there. We have differences of opinion. They're legitimate. They're good faith differences of opinion about how election laws are conducted and whose vote we should count and is there voter fraud or is there not. I think it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to say we have differences of opinion. It's okay to say we're Democrats and Republicans. We all ran for office. We have to have some thick skins about it. I certainly have developed calluses from the thickness of my skin over the last several years. But I will say this. It behooves all of us, all of us, all of us, to conduct ourselves and to speak to each other and with each other on the merits, on arguments that make sense, with logic and with good faith at all times. It improves the quality of our work product, it improves the quality of our political performance, and I think that's what we need to do. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Clerk will take the call. The amendment fails. Madam Are there Speaker. any additional amendments to the bill to its gentleman from Baltimore County? I mean, gentleman from Anne Arundel County. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I have an amendment at 